so now we're going to do chapter number four, a helpful glue indicator, and we're going to start with experiment number one, preparing the litmus solution. So first, of course, I'm going to put on my safety goggles. <laughs> then I'm going to pour three centimeters of water into the test tube that I marked with centimeters. So let's pour some water into here. And then I'm going to add three spoonfuls of the litmus powder. So one, two, and three. And then I'm going to close the test tube with a stopper and shake it. And then leave it for a while in a safe place that's far away from small children so that it'll dissolve. And after having let it sit for a while, we're gonna pour the solution into this vial. There's gonna be some residue left in the bottom of the test tube that's kind of solid. So we don't wanna pour that in. We wanna just dispose of it in a garbage and just have this vial. And now we're going to add some denatured alcohol to extend the shelf life of this litmus solution. So let's pour a little bit of the alcohol into a cup. All you need is a small amount. And then use a pipette, get half a pipette full. So that's about a third of a pipette, so we might want to add a little more and put it into the solution. I'm going to add a little more. And then I'm going to put this on and shake it a little bit. And now we have our litmus solution. So now we're going to move on to experiment number two. So first blue, then red. So we're going to add three drops of litmus solution to three centimeters of water. So let's put three centimeters of water into our test tube. Okay. And then we're going to add three drops of the litmus solution. One, two, three. And we can see that the solution is blue. We can swirl it a little bit. Then we're going to pour a little bit of vinegar into another test tube. Something light colored like white vinegar. So all we need is a small amount. And then we're going to add some vinegar from the test tube into the litmus solution. One drop. And then we can swirl it around a little bit. And you can see how the solution is turning red. So now we're going to move on to experiment number three. So first we're going to pour three centimeters of water into another test tube. And then we're going to put a small spoonful of sodium carbonate into it. Being very careful when you take off the lid. So a small spoonful. And we can use the spoon to mix it in. Then we can add a few drops of this solution into the one from experiment number two. Let's add a little more. And you can see it's turning blue again. So now we're going to move on to experiment number four. So now we're going to fill another test tube with five centimeters of water. And we're going to add five drops of the litmus solution. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to add one spoon tip of sodium carbonate. And we can stir it with the spoon tip. Okay, and in a second dry test tube, we're going to add one small spoonful of sodium hydrogen sulfate. You might have to crush it a little bit.
So now if you hold this up to your audience, you can hardly see that there's something at the bottom of the test tube. But then you can show them what happens when you pour the litmus solution with sodium carbonate in it into this test tube. And it turned blue, and then it turned red. So now we're going to do experiment number five in chapter four, the gas in the soda bottle. And first, we're going to fill the measuring cup with 25 milliliters of water. Then we're going to add one spoon tip of sodium carbonate. And the spoon tip is the smaller side. And then we're going to add 10 drops of the litmus solution that we made in experiment 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And let's mix it up a little bit with the spoon. And then let's add a shot of soda water and see what happens. And you can see that the solution turns pink and that indicates the presence of an acid.